So the Shy, Season 4, Episode 6, entitled Candyman. We'll get into it right after this. So they did not go the power route. I thought they was going to drag it out uh, to finally explain who shot Duda, uh, Chris Cook, and no, they let us know right away it was Laverne. Yes, Brandon and Coogee's mom shot Duda, obviously, because uh, he was responsible for Brandon's death, um, you know, which he got canceled or rolled off the show. So, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't suspect her at all. So I, I think that was decent, I guess. I, I honestly never expected her. I thought it was going to be somebody completely different. Um, but he winds up surviving, which I knew he probably would. Um, not that, I, like I said in my last uh, review, if he did pass, I don't think nobody cared. And it seemed like nobody else cared in this episode besides his wife uh, because nobody else mentioned it. Not one other scene they mentioned that the mayor was shot, uh, except the scenes involving his wife um, when she had to step up and take control of everything. And uh, who knows? It could have been orchestrated by her. Uh, but, you know, she, you see that she really cares for him. Um, the other lady that... He was popping. She didn't give two dams. <laughs> he kept wanting to see her. She would not come see him. She finally went and visited him. And, uh, yeah, seeing that this wasn't approved by the mayor's office, it's like, dude, this dude is laid up in a hospital shot. What are you talking about? Like, his wife controls is controlling everything. Like, you... Anyway, uh, but this is the first time you see Duda in a uh, kind of a, a feeble position. You know, where he's not in an authoritative state. And uh, I think it's kind of like um, realization to him. And Candy asks him. I keep calling her Candy. That's not her name in the show. But I'm going to call her Candy anyway because that's what I know her as. Uh, but she, his wife keeps asking him. She asked him where, like, who did this. And he explains who did it and why they did it. And he's like, yo, I had to take care of him because he was talking to the feds, et cetera, et cetera. And, um... She's giving these statements, and she's like, yo, I'm running this now, so you either roll or get ran over, or something to that effect. And, uh, hey, I like it. Um, but like I said, nobody else talked about this in none of the other scenes. Not Trig, not Jake. If they did, maybe I missed it, but nobody was talking. Like, literally nobody cared. I don't know. It's just bad editing. They didn't film the scenes together. Uh, this, this is just what I be talking about with this show, like... How is this not a big a big thing? The mayor of Chicago has gotten shot. Jake, who directly is affected by this, you know, this is his stepdad, or was his stepdad at some point, or his dad, his adopted dad at some point. He don't mention this at all. They just glaze over it. Like, ah, whatever. Uh, moving along, uh, we see Kevin, Jake, Jim in class. And Kevin is boiling, boy. He's throwing a pin at Jake. And I'm just like, that was so childish. Like, why are you throwing stuff at people? Like, if you don't like him, just go over there, pull his dreads, and start just start. Mm, mm. But uh, they wind up getting into a conversation. Kevin stole on him. Uh, and then he accidentally hit the teacher. That teacher nose all bloody. And I was just like, oh, man. This is the beginning and the end for Kevin, man. Kevin about to be the new Ronnie in a minute. Is he going down a downward spiral? Uh, yeah, they wind up suspending him indefinitely. Uh, he winds up um, talking to Dre about it, and he's like, yo, I'm going to be on punishment. They're like, nah, we're not going to punish you. He's like, can I go see Papa? So he winds up going to see Papa. Uh, Papa, I like, yo, listen, I like every time Papa's on the screen, man. I, I need to see more of Papa because he's a character and a half. And uh, you know he's trying to get his uh his his podcast Papa's Pull Pit off the ground, and uh, I guess his girlfriend is getting some notoriety. Maybe she sings, I believe, and uh, you can tell he's getting a little bit jealous of that, you know, uh, because his thing isn't taking off as it should be, and um, I guess maybe he don't feel like she's putting the effort uh, to help. But she, I mean, she does. She give him solid advice, uh, but he decides to have this uh, intervention between Jake, Jim, and and Kevin. On air on a podcast, so he kind of ambushes Kevin when by bringing uh, Jake and Jim over, and uh, they have a little sit down to kind of get down to the bottom of what's happened. 
And uh, he explains to Jake, like, yo, I always had your back with everything. Like, why would you do this? And this is where I thought one of one of my, one of the subscribers on my uh from my last review said that uh they said that uh Kevin or Jake was playing Gemma and that eventually be revealed like oh he's just playing her you know what i mean just to kind of expose her for Kevin but that's not the case you know what i mean cuz i was thinking like okay maybe he is cuz you know Jake a little savage at the time you know he said i don't chase he said, I don't chase him. You see the shirt. He said, I don't chase him. I replace him. You keep calling the phone. Yo. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so the, the intervention just goes completely wrong. Uh, Gemma's explaining, like, she tells him, I still love you. He's like, yo, if you still love me, then why are you with him? And she's just like, because um, I just want to try something new. And then Papa's girlfriend chimed in and says, just because... Y'all started together, don't mean y'all going in together. I'm like, ooh, it's getting deep. These little these little kids getting deep. How the kids in the show got the best scenes, man? How are the kids inflicting the most emotion and in, in, in having the best scenes in the show? Uh, things eventually boil over, uh, and Jim Owens believing, or Kevin Owens believing, Jim Owens believing, or Jim Owens believing, Kevin Owens believing, and then Jake just, just heads out, man. And I'm like, this is all... Called her a homie hopper and I think she's spat. And well, you are. You could have talked to anybody else. She wanted to talk to his friend. But uh, hey, man, females, that's what they do, man. Uh, she just wants some, you know, I guess she just figures new and exciting. And like she said, Kevin wasn't whatever excuse she made up. You know, females gonna make excuses up to why you're not performing to their standards. And he's like, yo, listen, you come from a whole different background. Like, you can't understand what I'm going through. And like I said in my last room, you have to realize all the trauma Kevin has went through. Like from the first season up until now, this dude consecutively has taken losses or uh, something has happened in his life to, to kind of force him to act this way. You know, I don't think this is just all out of, um, sorry, I got to get my lights back up, all out of just acting out, I think this is acting out as a result of trauma that he's experienced throughout his life. Uh, now, moving along, we got Trig and Imani. Uh, they're still at their odds. Uh, they wind up having a conversation, and it's crazy because uh, <laughs> you got a, a, a Trig taking advice from a man who's trying to give man advice. To, I, it's all convoluted, but uh, they wind up squashing their beef. Uh, He's like, yo, we're going to ride this out together and blah, blah, blah. And uh, another boring ass scene. Um, it was boring. Uh, Keisha's still reeling from the, um, you know, giving birth, being a mom. And she's having, I don't know if it's postpartum she's having. Uh, because, I don't know, postpartum is normally when you're keeping the kid and you're you going through. The, but she's having come, some kind of regrets. And, uh. She goes to see the baby. She's thinking about the baby, goes to see the baby, and uh, she decides that uh, she wants the baby back. And um, this is going to be a pain in the ass because the mom's looking like, what? Mom drinking wine broad day, like, what the hell? Like, why you want to bring a baby? Like, we, we, when, when did you decide this? Like, what's going on here? Uh, Keisha winds up uh, talking to the guy, Bakari. She wanted to give him a little play. He's still trying to go at her. She wanted to give him a number. Uh, she bored one night, calling. They go to Emmett's restaurant, um, and they kicking it. And he tries to reach in and advance and touch her, and she kind of, like, freezes up. And he tells her to kind of, like, count to three, breathe, take deep breath, and, and winds up helping her. So that's going to be her new love interest or whatnot. He's uh, a little square-ass dude, but, hey, that's what she need right now, man, because she was a little fast-ass anyway, dating teachers and all kinds of shit. But, um you know, they had similar experiences. She used to run track, uh, was a start, was an athlete. He was an athlete. He was headed to the NBA. He got hurt. And then, obviously, she had her dilemma with, you know, the whole situation. So, uh, it, it's kind of like opposites or not even opposites, but similar as a track. Like, they both got similar backstories. Um, just trying to navigate life uh, after traumas, you know, or losses, I should say. Like Meek Mill say, wins and losses. 
So um uh what else we had here? Um Dre is still holding withholding information that she's uh helping um she's helping Emmett's mom uh you know, through her process, through her whole chemo, her, her 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 chemo and whatnot, and I'm like, why hasn't she still told her what's going on? I just don't understand this. It makes no sense. Um, but she decides not to um, for whatever reason. Uh, Nina actually follows her, sees her at um, uh, what is her name? Emmett's mom's house. That's what she's called. She sees her there. Uh, on the porch, she's obviously see they're just kicking it on the porch. I don't even know why she would suspect something's going on. Uh, but why not just ask her if you do suspect, just ask her, be like, yo, I, why are you there? Like, or like, uh, what's going on with you and such and such? You know, I seen you texting her on the phone. Yes, I went through your phone, but I need to know what's going on. And it's, it could have been so problem, but no, nope. she goes to a bar, gets popped. And, uh, this, she's just so... I've never seen a mom just so oblivious to everything that's going on under her roof. You know, she's supposed to be like the Montreal, like the the, 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 the nurturer of the, the household, uh, because obviously Dre's role is that of a man. Uh, so I never saw somebody just so oblivious to everybody's issues in the house. And when they do come to you for some kind of guidance, you don't have any answers ever. You don't have any answers. The answer is the, the wine bottle. You just go and you reel and you deal. And I don't know. Uh, but she decides to go to a bar, get drunk, and then the B I A T, the brat, bags her. The brat wind up bagging her, man. I was like, okay, this is what they about to have a brat for. It. And I'm glad to see the, the brat fully embracing um, you know, her identity as a, a lesbian woman. Um, and being comfortable to express that on the screen. I think that's dope. Uh, Brat, you know, was always one of the the hottest female rappers coming up, and she always been a looker. And, um, you know, we took a hit when she decided to play for the other team. We took a hit, fellas. But listen, it's all good. We got new rap female rappers coming. So it's all good. It is what it is. But uh, she comes through, bags her, uh, and they show them in the scene. They getting it on. Uh, she wound up eating Nina box. She wound up eating that box, and uh, Nina drunk ass go home. Uh, and I gotta take a shower. And I bet you do. You got fucking. You know what you got on you. But uh, she uh, she winds up uh, being distant with Dre. And Dre winds up like, yo, what's going on? And she's like, yo, I, she finally decides to say something now that she saw her at uh, Emmett's mom's house, and she's like. Dre just breaks down. This is one of the emotional scenes, man. And Dre is a great, great actress. Uh, I like Dre, man. Uh, like, Dre's starting to be one of my low-key uh, favorites, you know what I mean? Like, right off like off the bench, six man off the bench, like, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm glad they're giving her a little more roles um, to, uh, to say. But she winds up breaking down, and she's like, she has cancer. Emmett's mom has cancer, and she's like, and Nina, you can just see it in her face, like, oh, sh-, like, man. And she's like, fuck, fuck. Like, and she's saying fuck because I done fuck somebody else. And that's not even what was going on. Like, you know what I mean? And, oh, that was emotional, man. That was very emotional, man. And, but she should have told her from the jump. That's what I feel like. She should have been told her, man, because y'all are not just like in a domesticated partnership. Y'all are married. That's your wife. You have to tell her that, especially something like that. I don't even know why Emmett's mom would want her to keep that from her because I know she said she got a big mouth. That it don't matter, dude. She can't be sneaking around. She a married woman. She can't be doing that. But uh, been, this is what happened. So Nina, the whole episode is kind of like you can tell she's she's fucked up for the fact that she cheated off a of suspicion that wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing even materializing out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dre is a good dude, or female, whatever Dre identifies as, is a good, solid person. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we'll see how it plays out, man. Hey, uh, Nina, follow, uh, don't do what Emmett do. Keep your damn mouth shut. It happened, let it be a thing of the past. Unless y'all out and y'all see the brat and she try to get some more of that, that's the only reason it should be brought up. But, hey, listen, don't go to no bars. At least don't go back to that bar. 
Chill the fuck out on out. All right? <clears throat> Delete your uh, text messages. Block the number. It happened. It was a mistake. Move on from it. Be great. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Dom and Tiff get an uh, opportunity to expand their edible business, uh, but Dom is kind of, I don't know, she, I don't, maybe she just don't like white people. She's just on the fence about it because she wants to know, you know, she want to make sure she don't get played pretty much. You know what I mean? She don't want to jump at the first thing because she's like, listen, I know our worth. If they offering us this, I know we could get more. And uh, her and Tiff kind of have like somewhat of a blowout. Um, nothing serious, but... um. You know, she's just worried about the business. And uh, they eventually wind up circling black. Tiff apologizes. And then uh, Iman Shumper comes in. His cool ass. I mean, I love Iman. He <laughs> he was like, I got a proposition for you, shorty. <laughs> I love this nigga. Be a, nigga funny as hell, man. I fucks with Iman. But uh, he's like, yo, I got a proposition for y'all, man. I need this, this, this. So everything winds up working. He like, yo, this black owned. Yo, listen, man. I love the fact that marijuana is just like... It's not like, I mean, you, in some circles it is. Some people be like, oh, yes. But I love the fact that marijuana is just being embraced. Like, just people just, it's just, it's just a thing now. Like, it ain't, you know, you people, you walk in, you used to walk in back in the day, you smell like a pot. Everybody like, oh, my God, you, you smell like, you know, everybody, it's like, it is what it is now. It's a part of just, it's just a part of life now. Uh, and it should, it should be like that. Marijuana ain't never did nothing to nobody. It ain't never did nobody no harm. It just try to make you feel good. Just try to relax you after a long day at work. If you need some sleep, it's just all different type of strands and brands. And listen, man, I love it. I love it, one hundred percent, man. I love the fact that shows is incorporating it into stuff. Cause you know, marijuana was like that low key drug. Everybody did it, but it was just like, oh, we can't talk about this, man. I love this shit now. I love it, one hundred percent. I love it, man. Listen, man, I can't wait until I can smoke again. But, um, we, yeah, so I think, did I talk about everything? Uh, Dre was counseling Vic Mensa and his girl. I don't know what that was about. I'm like, is, is, that's what Dre does? She's just like a real, like, counselor? <laughs> like a relationship counselor or something? I thought she counseled at school or something. I don't know, but her and Vic Mensa and his girlfriend, that's the rapper, the light skinned rapper, by the way. They wind up getting into a little spat about something. And um, I don't know, it was stupid. Uh, Kevin goes back to school, tries to get back reinstated, and they not messing with him at all. They told him they got a zero tolerance policy. Uh, he tried to apologize, um, you know, try to step in front of the bus a little bit, explain what happened. He said they apologize. They wasn't going for it. So Kevin is back in the hood, um, and hopefully he don't become a product of his environment or the next Ronnie, which is where I see him going. Uh, they don't say anything about Duda's killer. Uh, his wife said they need to find her, but, I mean, obviously they already know who did it. So I don't think they're really prioritizing it or maybe Duda just like, I'll take care of it myself. Uh, and what else? Um, oh, Gemma and uh, Jake wind up getting caught at uh, the house by Trig and Imani. They about to get it in and... <laughs> that was funny. I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, and then the dad winds up coming over. Gemma's dad, and he's looking around like, oh, this is an interesting play. <laughs> Trey's like, yeah, man, I think she's good for uh, Jake. And her dad probably just like, oh, my God, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you messing with all these different boys? But he, I know he's a, he understands, man. Like, she's a teenager. She's a girl. She has hormones. She's... This is what she's going to be doing. Like, this is a phase. Like, this is what they, you know, she's coming into young womanhood. But uh, <laughs> you could tell he disapproved like a motherfucker. He was like, uh-uh. And uh, Trig's talking to uh, J uh, Jake, and he's like, yo, we got to have a conversation about, uh, you know, birds and the bees and, you know, when you love a woman. And I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, you don't even love a woman. You love a man that pretends to be a woman. But that's neither here nor there. And listen, I'm not trans uh, bashing uh, to each his own. I have no issues with that. But it was just kind of weird that he's getting, he's giving love advice uh, to 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 Jake about other women or the opposite sex when he dates the same sex. Uh, you know, just that's just what it is. But uh, 
hey, we'll see what happens, man. It seemed like Jake was paying attention. Uh, and, and Trig was right. Trig, what, Trig was absolutely right was what he was saying. you like, yo, you got to under... You know what I mean? Like, you sleeping with her, you you could you transfer them spirits. You know, when you sleep with somebody, they energy transfer to you, your energy transfer to them. So they got some bad energy, you're going to get a dose of that. You got that good energy, you give them some of your good energy, you're taking some of their bad energy. If y'all both got bad energy, y'all transferring bad energy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a whole heap of shit. Uh, so that was solid. Um, other than that, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um if I missed anything, post it in the comments below. I apologize. But uh, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's do this again next week. This episode, uh, was it trash? No, I actually enjoyed this episode. I wouldn't say it was tr- uh, It was kind of trash. It, it was on the teetering on trash because it's just the whole shit with the mayor. They never just, I just feel like that could have been a bigger issue. Uh, but it is what it is, man. This show ain't been the same since Brandon left. It ain't going to be the same. And it's just scattered everywhere. So uh, is it trash? I wouldn't say it was super, super trash. It was it was somewhat trash, but it was a decent watch, you know. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I'm a, I'm like fucking, I, don't, I try not to like the show, but then my, my black ass wind up watching it every week too. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Till next time. Peace.